Jazz is the seventh studio album by, of course, Queen. Um, I've reviewed the first six Queen albums. You know, Rock Do requested like s the first seven albums. He, he didn't, you know, say the names, but he said do the first seven. But you know, I, I already did the first six, like I said, and I'm about to review Jazz requested by Rock Do. So uh, you're welcome. I uh, already reviewed um, Rumors and I did the Defenders of the Fate just then and October Rush as well. So you're welcome again. Um, yeah, like I said, this is the Seven Studio album. It's 44 minutes and 44 seconds long. That's kind of a uh, well, you know, all four, so I guess. Um, I think Queen was just having fun right there. Uh, we have 13 tracks. Uh, a few of them were singles, I believe. Three or four of them. And yeah, we have one kind of old picture. You know, the, the bicycle race with the naked women having a bicycle race. Fat bottom girls and bicycle race, I guess. Yeah, because bicycle, bicycle race and fat bottom girls are one thing together. Because I think the music video... If there's a music video, but um, I, I don't think it's on YouTube because it's pretty, it's a little bit inappropriate. Uh, but yeah, Jess, we have the first song which is Mustafa uh, from a 13 album, um, from, a ter from a 13 track album. Uh, so Mustafa is kind of an interesting song written by Freddie Mercury. Um, the songs are kind of, uh, you know, what is the thing? I believe they are Indian or some kind of Eastern inspired sort of, you know, language is involved in Mustafa. It sounds kind of odd. It sounds kind of special in a way. Um, I would not put this as the opening track because it is quite an odd uh, track. Uh, but I do think it still works for the band, it still is a nice song to open up with. It's very special, especially for a Queen song and, you know, for that it's one of the most unique singles by the band uh, to date. Um, and then we have Fat Bottom Girls, which is of course, you know, uh, one of the classic songs of this album. It's 4 minutes and 16 seconds long. Um, it, you know, it's not a taste of song, it's, uh, I do quite dig. Uh, fat bottom girls but it's kind of you know the the 70s answer to twerking i think you know um people now say you know shit like that but back then it was called fat bottom girls which is way more appropriate i think but of course you know now's generation they don't know what the proper means and you know behaving yourself and all those you know stuff that you have to learn or is you know it's basic it really is uh, but let's not go into that, this is a classic song and uh, although it's not my favorite Queen single, you know, Queen has like 50 singles, but uh, it's still way up there for me and it still is a classic. Then we have Jealousy, which is 3 minutes and 14 seconds long. This song just, you know, is a classic as well. It does have some staying power, although I, don't, I, I do think it's kind of overshadowed because of the fat bottom girls and the bicycle race combination. I do think this song is overshadowed but it still is a good song nonetheless and it's consistent it's you know a catchy pop rock song and yeah it's I mean it's written by Freddie Mercury so cannot go wrong with that. Then we have Bicycle Race which is of course the second part of Fat Bottom Girls you know the Fat Bottom Girls are racing on bicycle races and they kind of interchange with each other I thought they were back to back on the on the track listing but they aren't you know they're separated by jealousy which is kind of which is kind of all that thing um but yeah this is written by mercury again and fat bottom girls was actually written by brian may so that's interesting uh, it's kind of similar to fat bottom girls i think it still is very good but you can hear some distinctive changes between brian may's and freddie mercury's uh songwriting abilities um i would say that um that Brian May has more of an ear for symphony and more melody tones and Mercury has more of a, uh, a beat kind of catchy tone to him, if that makes sense. Uh, but both songs work perfectly with each other and I do understand why they're both, you know, such uh, classic main staple songs and why they're, you know, combined for a double single. Uh, because they're both great. Uh, and then we have If You Can Beat Them, which is written by John Deacon. 
And I don't, you know, um, I love, you know, I love every Queen member, including John Deacon. He's kind of the weakest member. He, he did wrote some of the best bass lines of the band, like uh, another one by does, and I believe he wrote it under pressure as well, which are two of my favorite Queen songs. Uh, but if you can beat them, it's kind of you know one of the tracks that is still pretty good, but it is kind of repetitive. I think you know the lyric department is just saying you know if you can beat them, join them, which is one of the most generic things you can say. You know, not hating on Queen, not hating on John Deacon, but it's definitely one of the most generic songs on the record, and especially when you have four classic singles like you know the uh, that side one out had, then this is definitely kind of a disappointing song. But it's also a John Deacon band song, so. I didn't have high expectations, although, you know, I love John Deacon, but, you know, he's kind of the weakest songwriter of the band, although his bass playing is amazing. Simplistic yet very, very memorable. Then we have Let Me Entertain You, which is catchy against a beat. And Mercury always has, you know, the a beat song that he, that he writes. Uh, so this is definitely one of the more upbeat songs. You know, he's just saying, let me entertain you, and every song or every word he is saying, he says it in a way higher falsetto than the last word. Uh, so, you know, with Lat, he's kind of, you know, speaking normal, singing normal, and with you, he's kind of yelling his balls off. So, that is kind of well, it's, it's, it's kind of a funny song, I think, as well. Uh, unfortunately, it reminds me of a shitty ass artist that has the same title. Uh, and that uh, I actually knew that song first, or I knew this one, but I knew that one more and better because it was a single and this one wasn't and i fucking hate that artist if you know who i'm referencing that is really fucking horrible but this is still a pretty good song i think only time is that it reminds me of the shitty ass artist when i read the title but hey what are, what are you gonna do about it uh then we have dead on time which is written by may uh very dark track i think this is definitely one of the more um darker pinned track on the records um, so yeah, definitely check this one out. It's very dark. It's very heavy for you know a pop rock album in a way. I believe it's pop rock, um, or it's just rock. Yeah, it's just rock. Um, so the next track is uh, in only seven days, and I think that side two is definitely kind of hit or miss for me. Um, I, I do think that side one is pretty much flawless, aside from some tracks. But side two is kind of you know. Uh, less memorable aside from a few songs but in only seven days it's kind of you know yes I mean spam but John Deacon again not hating on him but it's just kind of you know filler it's two and a half minutes long it's not too good you know it isn't a bad tune but it's definitely one of the tracks that I would leave behind because it's definitely just way less memorable than the rest uh, then we have uh, Dreamers Ball, and this is definitely a better song because it's written by May again. Um, this is just a very magical track. I believe this is about disco, you know, the Dreamers Ball, the, the giant uh, disco ball that, um, you know, you had back in the day. And it was released in 79, so I believe disco wasn't dead yet. I believe it died out in the 80s, but there we go. Uh, definitely a very special track. I still really like it, and I think that May does an exceptionally well job on this track with the songwriting and guitar playing. And then we have Fun It and this is one of those, you know, kind of party songs which, you know, ha you have to kind of put your brain on zero to really enjoy this track the fullest. Uh, not hating on Roger Taylor because he is one of my favorite singing drummers. Shameless plug to one of my most popular videos, but, um, uh, but yeah, you know, Fun It is definitely a fun song. It is a, a fun party anthem, but it's definitely, you know, Kind of one of those songs where, like I said, you have to put your brain on zero to really enjoy it, but it's, it's still a fun song. Not hating on Roger because he is a great drummer, but, you know, songwriting ability. Leave that, uh, leave that to Brian May and uh, Freddie Mercury, I would say. And then we have Leaving Home uh, Ain't Easy, which is uh, by May again. And I think that May has all the kind of dark and dribbling uh, songs that the record has to offer. I think that, I'm not sure, but you can correct me, of course. Uh, this is a very emotional track, you know, Leaving Home Ain't Easy, a lot of great piano as well by, I believe, Freddie Mercury, yeah, there we go. He has a lot of great piano playing on this track, I love, you know, the 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 writing by Brian May on this track and the lead vocals by him are just amazing. 
Um, yeah, and I think, you know, the Fred of Mercury, you know, he doesn't even have to open his mouth because it just destroys everything on the piano. I just love the piano with Fred of Mercury on this track. Uh, or does he actually play on it? No. <laughs> Oh my god, I'm such a fucking retard. Um, yeah, he only plays piano on uh, track 1 through uh, 3, 4, 6, 8 and 12, so he doesn't play piano on this track, but... Oh my god, I, mean, I, I still love the song, man, fuck off. <laughs> he does play piano on the next track, but that's no surprise for me, because it is Don't Stop Me Now. Arguably one of the biggest singles of this record. Oh uh, well, it is the biggest single of this record, but there we go. Um, yeah, of course this song, uh, it's very classic, it's written by Mercury, he does the lead vocals as well. It's three and a half minutes long, the solo is great by Brian May, the vocals by Freddie Mercury are just fantastic, out of this roof. Um, I just love, you know, I'm floating around in ecstasy, so don't stop me now. He's just, you know, having the, the craziest lyrical content ever on this track, it's insane. I know that Brian May hates this song, mainly because, you know, it's... Um, Freddie Mercury was saying, you know, don't stop me now, I'm just doing what I want. Including the gay, the gay sex, which ultimately co cost him his life. Um, so yeah, that is why Brian May hates it and even hates it more now. Because, you know, the death of Freddie Mercury in 1991. Uh, so yeah, this is definitely kind of a swan song nowadays for the band. Since, you know, it was kind of about that. Which, you know, cost Freddie Mercury his life. Um, so it's a great song and it's a terrible song as well. It's terrible because, you know, it is it is basically the anthem for Freddie Mercury to do whatever he wants and he did that and he died. But it is a great song because it is a great song. It is a great composed, it's a great written, greatly written, it's just a great song in general. But I kind of agree with May right there. I don't, you know, I love the song. Well, he hates it, I love the song, but um, it's definitely one of the songs that you may wish didn't exist because if Freddie didn't write this, maybe he wouldn't gone on, you know, such a uh, binge, if you know what I mean. Uh, but, you know, maybe if he didn't write the song, he, he probably would have done it anyway. So I still, you know, I, I, I'm still glad that the song exists. I, you know, we all said that uh, Freddie had gone, so there we go. Uh, and then we have more of the jazz, which is from Roger Taylor. Um, and it's, you know, it's not really a creative song. He is the, you know, he gets writing credits and lead vocal works on this track. Although it's, it's, it's an ending credit song. It's kind of, you know, the compilation track that kind of ev uh, pulls everything together. So I don't think, you know, you really, uh, that Roger Taylor really deserves an, uh, a writing and a lead vocal credit on there. Since it's mainly compilations of the 12 tracks that we had already before. Uh, I still like the song, I still like that it kind of compiles everything that we heard so far, but uh, I do think it's kind of odd that he is, uh, that he get, gets credit on this track, since, um, you know, if really you should have just credited the whole band, because it's the whole band playing more of the jazz, which is, it is essentially just a compilation song, really. Uh, so I do think that I like the song, but it's kind of pointless as well, but I do like, you know, that it exists. I do think that the writing credit is a bit old by Roger Taylor because he didn't really play on it. Well, he did play on it, but the entire band played on played on it. So I would just credit the entire band, but hey, that's just me. Uh, so overall, this is a pretty good album. I think that side one is pretty much uh, flawless. Um, you know, even if you can beat them and let me entertain, I think are still pretty good tracks. Um, I think that Dead on Time is pretty good. In Only Seven Days is a little bit generic. Uh, Dreamers Ball is great. Fun it is. Uh, you know, it's simplistic, but it's a fun song. Leaving Home Ain't Easy is dark and mellow. Love it. A Don't Stop Me Now is, of course, a masterpiece. And More of the Jazz is kind of pointless, but still pretty good as well at the same time. Uh, so overall, I, I think this is a pretty good record. I do think that it misses more songs like Don't Stop Me Now. Because if, you know, if the record would be entirely with songs like that, it would be, one, of course, one of the best albums by Queen, of course. Kind of a night at the opera part two, but you you know, uh, lightning doesn't strike strike fucking out. Lightning doesn't strike twice most of the time, but some bands it really does, like the Beatles and Zeppelin and Floyd, I guess. But you know, you can only make so so many great records, you know. So uh, I would give this record an eight point six. 
A really good record, I really liked it. It definitely has its flaws. It is a little bit cheesy, a little bit dated, if I have to be honest with you. It's still a pretty good record nonetheless. Check it out if you haven't already. Uh, Queen, of course, classic bands. Uh, I've reviewed the first seven albums by them now, so, you know, rock to your welcome again. Uh, I can leave links behind, but I'm kind of too lazy to do that. But if, you know, if he's gonna request it again, then I'm gonna leave links behind. So, thank you for uh, watching this video. And I actually went through my comment section and I still got a lot of shit to do. So I actually forgot that. But for the week I'm gonna review one more record and this is actually requested by Flexible Music Lover. Uh, Flexible Music Lover and Off Time Guitars are kind of uh, dead right now. You know, not uh, IRL dead, but they're dead as in they don't comment anymore, they're probably busy with school. Um, but Flexible Music Lover actually requested this record. So I'm gonna review it in the next, uh, in the next video. So um, yeah, still leave behind your album reviews or you know your whatever you want to uh, request. Let me know it in the comments down below, and I will um, you know discuss it with you, and maybe it will be featured in a, a future video. You never know. So let me know what you thought about this episode. Uh, I really love Queen. Do you think you know they're overrated, underrated? What do you think about jazz? Let me know in the comments down below. I'm a nose is itchy as fuck, so I've got to end it right here. Um, fucking hell. Hope you've enjoyed this video. God bless, safe, take care, and peace.